Hey y'all, I'm Chris Pope, and welcome to the Coyote Trapping School Podcast. Uh, this is episode one, the inaugural episode, um, and it's something I've been putting off for probably a year or more, something that I thought would be a good idea and just haven't executed. So if you find this useful, I apologize I haven't done it sooner. Uh, but this is this is to kind of broaden or, or extend my uh, the suite of things that you know my my main goal and and passion and desire is to make trapping um, easier for people that are interested to get into. Uh, and so I've got we've got uh, the Coyote Trapping School website uh, and the Coyote Trapping School YouTube channel, uh, Coyote Trapping School Instagram and Facebook. Um, and if you've been around for a while, I, you know you know it started out as uh, howtotrapbeavers.com was how I first started, and then uh, got some traction there. But you know, there's a lot of interest, been a lot of interest lately um, in in trapping coyotes specifically. Um, but this is not by any means just a sole coyote trapping deal. Uh, my my game plan, my goal is to uh, I like to trap everything. To be 100% honest with you, uh, I'm not. I'm not out there just to catch coyotes and turn everything else loose. Uh, I like trapping. I like to trap everything, and so that's kind of what I what I have done with the, these other platforms. Uh, if you follow it along, um, so don't don't let that deter you. If you're interested in more than trap coyote trapping, uh, I think we'll have stuff that'll that'll interest you. If you're just interested in coyote trapping, I think uh, hopefully we'll keep your interest anyway too. But. Uh, so one of the reasons that I, I'm just now doing, I'm doing it in this format. So this this video will be published on YouTube, and that's I'm, I'm used to YouTube. I've known YouTube. I've got 200 over 200 videos on YouTube. Been been uh, hitting YouTube hard for a while and had had really good success. Um, but and I'd be interested. Feel free to leave me your feedback. You know, I personally, as hypocritical as it seems for a guy that has a YouTube channel um, that's fairly popular, I, I think from a trapping perspective anyway. I rarely watch YouTube videos. I'm subscribed to a, a few channels, but I, I don't really watch any of them. Um, every once in a while, I'll watch uh, some of the Hoosier, Hoosier Trapper, Hoosier Trapping Supply uh, shows that I like. I like watching their uh, their content. They, they're uh, I enjoy that. But otherwise, I, I don't watch YouTube videos. It's not something that I do uh, unless I'm trying to learn how to do something. What I do do is podcasts. So I listen to a lot of podcasts. I actually I, I wound up having an issue with so many podcasts downloading onto my phone that uh, I had to start listening to podcasts at double speed just to get through all the podcasts. I probably take it a little uh, over the top, um, but that's, I, I feel like that's a, a lot of people's direction and, um, and you know, time is, is valuable and precious and I spend a lot more time writing. So I say that to say that hopefully this will be beneficial in a, a podcast form. I'm doing it as a video selfishly because I know how to do all my video editing and I figured out that I can shoot the video, I can publish the video to go on YouTube and I can also pull out the audio and uh, put that as a podcast. So I can kill two birds with one stone. So um, that's, that's like I say, partially it's something that I don't have to learn something new about audio editing. But also a lot of the stuff that we're gonna cover, it's probably more intuitive. It's not as intuitive uh, just listening, so it'd be helpful, more helpful to see it in person, or not, well, see it in person, yes, but uh, to see it uh, in front of you. So if you hear something and you want to go back and hear more about it or, or see it, you'll be able to see it on, on uh, YouTube as well. So hopefully that'll be a benefit. Uh, try not to get too ridiculous and long-winded here, but um, anyway, just wanted to give you a little background about myself. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm from Georgia. I'm in Georgia now. I, I've traveled, uh, done a little bit of living all across the South. Um, I got a degree in wildlife from the University of Georgia, go dogs, um, and wound up working for a short time. I always had an interest. I grew up hunting and fishing, and my uncle got me interested in trapping. I read a whole lot of fur fishing game articles and uh, read a whole lot of different magazine articles before the internet was around, um, and you know, information was as readily available as it is now. Uh, so that's kind of how I got my start. I finally got hooked up with the Georgia Trappers Association, which was a huge uh, door opener for me you know there's a big difference between reading articles and, and actually seeing things for yourself and being able to put that into practice and uh, so I, I had a, I was fortunate to have some trappers that kind of took me under their wing and let me run their trap line with them and uh, kind of show me show me how they did things and that 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 
escalated my my learning and my trapping ability tremendously. So that's why you know I've really pushed to try to do as much as I have and as much as I try to continue to do about um, publishing content on YouTube and, and Instagram and Facebook is that I know that it's a lot easier if you've got somebody to show you. Um, and so that's where I'm trying to come from and I hope it's, I, I think it's been helpful for people that are interested is to have that content that's available that you can go and look at it. You know, you don't have somebody right there with you, but you know, I try to be available and as close as I can. And, and just as a side note, I do have a, a, a program, Coyote Trapping 101, at the website coyotetrappingschool.com. And uh, that is a step-by-step -step program that walks you uh, individually through exactly the, the steps to get started trapping from what you need, outlining exactly what you need and exactly how to do those things. Uh, and then I, I will be adding soon uh, additional layers for basically cover all of, of uh, trapping, all fur bear trapping and predator trapping. So anyway, that's a side note, uh, but uh, that's why I started this uh, to try to try to help encourage people that were wanting to learn how to trap but didn't really know how to to give them the, the information to get started trapping. So anyway, uh, I got started trapping in high school. Went to college, was going to do something, uh, got my degree in wildlife biology, and I uh, had several trapping related jobs and kind of wildlife jobs, uh, but as I quickly saw that um, working in the wildlife field is, is pretty limited to uh, government positions and temporary positions, so um, it can be tough to get a, a kind of a stable career unless you want to go the government route, um, and nothing against those, but I didn't. I had a, a little bit of experience working for um, some state agencies and it just I didn't float my boat. So I wound up going back to school, got a degree in forestry, a master's in forestry, and that's what I do as a day-to-day -day job. That's what pays the bills is, is uh, forestry related and uh, that has been, that's been good for me. Uh, it's, it's provided a lot of opportunities and uh, I, I really appreciate the opportunity that I have. So, uh, But I try to be trapping or hunting or doing something outdoor related uh, as much as I can year round. I've got a family and I, I get, get them involved and so that's what uh, you know I hope one one aspect that I can show is that yeah it's it's definitely more productive and easier if you can run traps by yourself you can get more ground covered but man being able to get your family in there trapping is definitely something that you can do and get your family involved and have a lot of fun doing it so I keep getting on tangents but anyway so uh, I, like I said I've lived in several different states uh, I actually when I graduated with my forestry degree. I went up to Alaska and trapped Arctic foxes in the Aleutian Islands. And maybe we'll do an episode on that because that was a pretty awesome and interesting experience. Something I'd always wanted to do and, and would have loved to get to go back again and do something. Uh, Alaska's just got a special special place in my in my heart and in my mind. Um, and then like uh, you know I came back came to the back to the real world I guess you could say got me a, a forestry job. Lived in Florida for a few years. Florida's got some wonky um, trapping laws so I didn't get to do the footholds are basically outlawed in Florida unless you get a special permit and you can use um, padded jaw traps or rubber jaw traps otherwise you're limited to snares and um, cage traps or box traps and snares I, I don't have a lot of experience with I, I'm pretty proficient with beaver snares um, but I don't think the snaring in the south particularly the southeast is is the same as the snaring in the the north or in the west you don't have the snow um, to really identify and, and uh, a lot of our trails are multi-use trails it's going to be a possum and a coon and a hog and a deer they're all going to run the trails it's not like you have just coon trails that are easily identified so i tried my hand at snaring down there didn't have a whole lot of luck i caught a possum and a couple hogs um, which i was happy with but i was a, a nuisance alligator trapper for that time so that kind of filled the niche of of uh, catching critters and catching animals so I definitely enjoyed that and caught my fair share of alligators and I had a lot of fun doing that. Uh, then career took me to Arkansas and uh, lived in South Arkansas right on the fringes of a giant um, cypress swamp where there were more beavers than people and had a lot of fun running a river trap line trapping out of my boat something that I always wanted to do. Um, that was a lot of fun and I moved around in Arkansas a couple times and finally Got the chance to come back home to Georgia, and that's where I've been for the past two years or so. This is 2018, so if you're listening, listen then, now. But um, And so that's where I'm at, back in my home state, my old stomping grounds, and uh, still trying to get after it, still trying to trap as much as possible. 
um, this past season, and I, I hope to do it continuously or continually as, as the trapping seasons get here. But you know, I ran a daily trap line uh, video on YouTube every day. Uh, I'd video running the trap line, whether I caught a couple coyotes and whether I had a really good catch or no catch at all. Videoed it and, and I posted it every night, and I, I got a lot of good response from that. It was a lot of fun. Um, I hope to do that again. Um, and this this past year was the the most consecutively that I've really trapped. I, we basically in Georgia have a three month trapping season and I trapped for pretty much two of the three months uh, and uh, learned a lot, had a lot of fun. Uh, and that's that's one of the one of the things that I've always kind of stood by and, and tried to take with me everywhere I go is that, you know, to be a trapper, you've always got to be willing to learn. If you get to the point that you know everything there is about trapping, uh, you, you, you're probably missing stuff or you're just too full of yourself. Um, and so, uh, you know, I always take it that you know, anybody that I, that I encounter, whether they've been trapping 50 years or they've been trapping two years, um, you know, every, everybody does something a little bit different. There's always something you can learn from everybody. So I hope that through some of the information that I convey um, that it's useful and uh, you can find something to, to utilize on your trap line. I welcome comments and feedback. Um, that's one thing that I love about, about YouTube. And you know my, my viewers and subscribers on there. I really appreciate everybody, and that was that was the most fun about this past season, and uh, doing the live trap line, the semi-live trap line. Is you know every day I would post a video, go to bed, and uh, when I got up in the mornings, there'd be a bunch of comments, and going through those comments and and seeing what everybody said and and uh, how everybody's reaction, and you know tips and stuff on improving on the trap line which was awesome because it did help me, you know, had people that would leave me leave me uh, comments and then I would make an adjustment based on that and make a catch. So, man, it, it's just a lot of fun. I really appreciate and enjoy the trapping community, you know. Uh, ever since I have got started in trapping and uh, got involved with the, the different trapping associations, you know, that's that's really who my, my core group of friends, a lot of people that I hang out with and consider good friends are trappers. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good group of people. Uh, some of them are a little bit rough around the edges. But uh, hopefully, the, you know, we can dispel the myth that trappers are all a bunch of snaggletooth yahoos running around killing everything they can they can get their hands on because uh, we're not. You know, in, in my in my opinion, um, you know, trappers are conservationists. Uh, trapping is highly regulated by uh, the federal authorities, or the authorities, uh, federal and state, and uh, you know, we want to make sure that their animals left for our kids to pursue for us to catch next year and for other people to see um, so it's, it's sometimes hard for people to grasp that and again I'm rambling but uh, I just wanted to give you a, a, a little update a little introduction um, this is definitely something I'm gonna roll out it'll be available um, on iTunes or uh, Stitcher or anywhere that podcasts are available as well as the YouTube portion um, and, and another reason you know that I that I'm, I'm doing this is uh, you know there's I had, there's not that many trapping podcasts out there. Um, really, so far as I know, uh, Clint Locklear has been, been producing trapping radio for a long time. And I think a lot of Clint, he's been around the trapping industry for a long time. He's you know a, a big time professional trapper and, and uh, has vast amount of knowledge around trapping. Um, but in my opinion, I haven't been able to find uh, trapping radio on any of the, the podcast uh, stations that I listen to. And that's been something that's been kind of disappointing. I think traffic, you can go to trafficradio.com and listen to all the, all of the, uh, all of the episodes and some, some really great episodes. But uh, you know the way I have my podcast subscribed and downloaded, that's uh, that's not something that I found. So the whole the other podcast that I know of is trappingtoday.com, and that's been started uh, uh, fairly recently, the end of this past year, uh, by Jeremiah Wood. He's up in Maine, and uh, he's a he's a wealth of knowledge and uh, you know targeting. Uh, trying to you know he's he's kind of built a trapping community of trappers um uh, of experienced trappers and uh so I, I like to listen to his podcast and and you know get fur market updates um but you know my this this podcast coyote trapping school i'm going to try to unless you y'all give me feedback otherwise you know i'm going to try to tailor it to more to the beginning trapper the beginner trapper and kind of the the way all of my my uh content is focused and you know we're going to go through some basic stuff um you know different kinds of traps the numbering system and sizing system of traps and and you know what traps are for specific animals um, but like i said I, i'm always open to comments uh leave comments here to you know ever how you're consuming this or shoot me an email chris 
K-R-I-S at CoyoteTrappingSchool.com. Um, I probably should do C-H-N-K, but uh, that's that's my name, Chris Pope, K-R-I-S Pope. And uh, like I said, I, I want this to be valuable and uh, enjoyable. And I hope uh, I hope y'all enjoy it. And I hope we can uh, have lots of good lots of good discussion and lots of good information exchange. And I, I hope we can all become better trappers. So uh, let's do this again soon. Thanks. Hey, I just wanted to say thanks for watching, thanks for following, thanks for listening, ever how you're consuming this. And uh, if you want to show some support, I appreciate your support of just watching, leaving comments, and interacting with me. If you want to show a little support and help support the podcast, the, the YouTube channel, and uh, the, the trapping endeavors and, and us bringing you the content, be sure to go to coyotetrappingschool.com. We've got an online store there. We have some coyote merchandise. So if you need a lucky trapping hat, we got you covered there. If you need a little more luck on the trap line, got some Cody, Cody Trapping School hats, shirts, gloves, bags. Uh, we also carry some Minnesota trap line products, baits, lures, and urines, uh, top quality stuff that I use on my trap line every year. And I also sell those in packages. So if you're interested in getting started and you don't really know what baits or lures to use, you can buy one of the packages that we've got, uh, that I've got kind of pre-selected. Um, that that's a good a great starting point to get out there and start catching game also if you're new to trapping and want to learn more about it want a, a clear concise and uh, central location to learn how to do it the coyote trapping 101 course that i put together uh, takes you from start to finish uh, from the bottom up so far you know what gear you need how to set a trap um, where to set traps and how to set your traps and uh, even what to do after you catch your animal, your, your coyote, skin it, marketing, marketing your furs and all that. Like I said, all that's in one central location if you're tired of trying to piece together and part together YouTube videos and forum comments and different things. Go to this one central place. Soon we'll be adding uh, different species, raccoon, bobcat, beaver, otter, fox, uh, to try to make that a, a well-rounded trapping library, not just specifically coyote trapping, but if you're interested in trapping, that's the place that you can go to and watch the videos that you need when you need them on your time and uh, and learn specifically uh, how to get started trapping. So be sure that's also on the website at Coyote Trapping School. Be sure to check that out, and I appreciate y'all following along. I appreciate the support, and I hope y'all are killing it on the trap line. Good luck this season. <laughs>